Greetings from sunny SoCal. Uh, welcome. We're going to do the penguin. <laughs> it's a favorite for people um, and with good reason. And I really like the penguin. I sort of went away from it for, for various reasons. So we're going to reintroduce the penguin, talk about what it does and what it doesn't do, and um, add a little bit of context for it. Okay. So penguin helps you um, decrease your deep core bias. So let's say... Um, we sort of have a deep anterior chain, which goes our posterior tibial muscles, our adductors, up through our, up through our psoas, and up into these, these sort of neck muscles. And it's very common in modern life because we have head for posture, or you ride a bicycle. Um, what happens is we can get very tight in that posture. It's almost like initiating a sit-up, and then we do planking and bridging, and we'll have our core strong. So it's, we're very front chain biased, and we can get a lot of tension in there. And... Um, Penguins is a great way to start working on our, activating our posterior chain and waking us up. And by activating the posterior chain and learning to step, we can sort of um, start changing that bias towards from a very front sort of bias to a more posterior bias. And it also taps into the, the deep, um, our painful withdrawal reflex. So if I stepped on a hot coal, okay, with my foot, I step on a hot coal, I will pull it up like this. Okay, um, so I get tight in the front of my ankles, tight in my hamstrings, and tight in my hip. And what also happens is my hip will lift up. So here's my hip. Um, painful withdrawal gets up into your hip. And you'll say, well, why is that relevant, Lawrence? Well, because a lot of people run with the... Sorry, this, let's just lift this up a little bit. Yeah, a lot of people run... Um, the OCD in me is going to want to line this up perfectly. Uh, I've got it. There we go. Okay. When we run, we'll often see people in this, in this position, and that's from an overactive painful withdrawal. I've got a little following thing to make my videos more animated. Let's see if we can just... Okay. okay. So, when we run, we can get bunched up from a painful withdrawal, and then we start to grab, and we get into this homolateral gait that we're talking about in the contralateral versus homolateral gait. So penguins is a great way of learning how to step out of that position. Does it make sense? So you can, a lot of people think if you have hip drop, it's a weak glute medius, but it's also from a guarding or painful withdrawal. It's also a timing issue. If I'm stuck in this pattern, it takes time, or you need to be in a different time and space. I want to be here when this leg hits the ground. I don't even want to be in the shape. So look at the difference in the shape. It's not just a weak glute medius. And part of it is this painful withdrawal, and we grab and we learn to we learn to grab for stability rather than trust and extend <laughs> for stability. So pe the penguin's great for down-regulating internal tension, too much previous trauma, um, a sense of holding on, a sense of grabbing, tight adductors, tight hamstrings. So penguins work like this, and it's called a penguin because one of my athletes just said, "Oh, that's the penguin exercise," because. She felt like she waddled like a penguin. I didn't make the name up. <laughs> um, so we go baby fingers down, thumbs up. And it's very, very simple. So elbows down. And pretty much I'm going to press my elbow into the table, um, into the floor. And I'm going to roll my hips off to the one side. We first want to rotate. So I've got my chest, my belly button, and my pubic bone. I kind of tilt it off 30 degrees to this side and my baby finger and my elbow pressing onto the floor and I can feel that this scapula is kind of, there's a bit of tension in the sca scapula and I'm sort of arched off to the one side. And then we're going to practice, first we're just going to rock our spine from one side to the other. So I'm gently pressing my heel and this will tie into um, the how to walk video, heels, staying on the outside of your foot off the big toe. You're doing the same thing. Here's your heel, we travel forward, there's my posterior chain. Rocking this way, heel, baby finger, elbow, heel, baby finger, elbow, okay, and I, so we're just rocking from side to side and my belly button, my pubic bone, my belly button, my chest are all staying in a straight line. And it's a soft organic rocking from some side to side. I don't need to use my baby finger and elbow, they're now on my core, I can just roll from side to side. I have a feeling that I'm letting this head fall back into the table. And then 
you know, you should be able to swap your weight from side to side. It's very, very good for people just to learn to roll. So even just rolling like this is a really good idea for most people because you never do it unless you're a kid. I mean, kids probably aren't watching this channel. Okay, so rocking from side to side is very good for you. It'll clean up your swimming. It, and running is a sense of I run this way, I run that way. We need to let us rotate around our spine when we run. Okay, so that's penguins. Um, the, sort of the start is first figure out this ro gentle rocking from side to side. Once we have the rocking from side to side, sort of to layer it up, step two is I'm going to rotate to the side and now I'm going to step, I'm going to lengthen this leg, I'm going to step through my heel and you can feel your glute engage and you should have a dimple in your ass. Okay, rock, then step. Rock, then step. What you don't want to do is step too soon. And the reason for that is if you step too soon, you're, I'm going to turn around. Your spine's going to do this. So we're turning and then stepping and then engaging the glute. And look how quiet my back is. Does that make sense? So we don't want, if you just step in, you're going to, you're going to pivot your spine. It's turn, then step. So, we go back down and we're going to practice turning and stepping. Turning and stepping. Turning and stepping. What we can do as well is the, the second video I made, which is contralateral or synchronous hips. We can put one, bend one knee. And then we can, so I've done this in a previous video. Knee goes away, hip floats forward. Then rock back, turn, and then step in penguin on this leg. And then rock forward, knee goes away, back arches, I can breathe in. Rock back, knee still facing the ceiling, don't let your knee lose its track. Rotate and step through your heel. Penguin on one side, synchronous hips on the other side. And that'll give you a really good sense of disassociation of your hips. Like it'll wake up your hips, your whole pelvic. You, when you talk about your hips, you're two nominate bones, so this, this ilium and this ilium. Turn and step. Knee goes away, hip floats forward. Turn and step. Knee goes away, hip floats forward. Turn and step. And that's a hybrid. And then obviously do it on the other side. Knee goes away, hip floats forward. Turn and step. Baby finger down. And here's my posterior chain, there's my arch stepping through my heel. Knee goes away, turn and step. Knee goes away, turn and step. And to sort of sync it up in your brain, <laughs> that would be like soft marching. So what you're doing is stepping, turning, soft knee, although and turning and stepping and soft knee. It, it's not the same. It's not exactly the same, but it'll, it'll make sense in your brain. You'll, it'll help you with your soft marching a lot. Okay. Turn and step, turn and step, turn and step, turn and step. And when you're running, it's turning and stepping, turning and stepping. So I hope that that gives you context for penguins, um, changes the way, like I've seen people be very rigid or static or very quick, try and make it organic. As you step, there's a thing called hips, heels, heart. You're, as you step through your heel, your glute should engage and you should feel your chest rise and point in the opposite direction. So as I step, heel down, glute engages. If I squeeze my glute in this position, if I, if I take a step okay, and I squeeze my glute, Look what happens to my body. I turn this way and your chest should basically expand because your posterior chain should contract. Okay? And we want to see that in running. It's chest pop. And chest pop comes from hips, hips, heels, heart. That connection. So walking on the outside of your heels, doing the penguins, um, practicing your contralateral gait, those things will all start to Distal out is one thing, hips, heels, heart. Yeah. Yeah. Hips, heels, heart. Turning and stepping and having a delayed, staying on the outside of your foot and then having a delayed transition of your forefoot will decrease ground reaction forces. And then 
that sense of length wakes up your posterior chain and then also it helps with the timing so in other words you don't get stuck in this pattern when you're running <laughs> you start to proactively land in this pattern and hips heels heart your if you grab your heels if you're grounded um, your hips are how you get to where you want to go while you're grounded where your heart goes so that's the hips heels heart connection heels are grounded Hips get you creatively and passionately and with energy to where your heart wants to go. That's hips, heels, heart. It's a little deeper than you might think. Okay, so I hope you enjoyed that. Um, take care, like, subscribe, subscribe. Actually, I, I don't really care. <laughs> if you know, you know. If you get it, you get it. Um, this helps people who does get it. So there's no burden or expectation on you to do these things. But thank you for the support. Thank you for the comments. Please let me know if you don't understand. And we'll just try and explain it better and better and we'll figure this all out. And yeah, I'll just keep, again, this content is, you know, I want it so that you have a deeper understanding and a feeling and assimilation and joining all the dots. So that's why I'm redoing all the content on my YouTube. Um, I want to explain it better and, and um, get a better sense of connection. Okay, so longer videos explained well. Take care, everyone. Um, have a wonderful 2023.